Welcome back to yet another video. Today we got something a little bit different than an ATX mainboard as you can see. This is a nice gigabyte card. As you can see on the sticker, this is an RX 460 4 gig card. This is quite a low end GP GPU. I have very little experience with GPUs. GPUs. I don't do high end GPUs like 30, 40 series. I wouldn't touch them. Only something like this. This is a very low power card, as you can see. No extra power, no 8 pins, no 6 pins. DVI HDMI display port. And all the power it takes, it draws to our PCIe slot, which is about 75 watts. This may be a disaster for me <laughs> to fix. I only picked this up because it was very cheap. I like these cards because they have no extra power and they have what you need to, to display something. You have DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort, so you have a lot of options. And without needing to add auxiliary power and still having 4 gigabytes of VRAM. That's what I like about this card. So I thought I might give it a go. I have some experience with these kind of cards, but in general GPUs are not my thing, as you know from my channel. Yeah, so if you've seen any GPU repair before, you probably know the drill to check the first few things. First thing I would check is the 12 volts that come in to the PCIe slot, which be, would be the first three fingers. And the nice thing about this graphics card is it has a nice fuse right there for the 12 volt power. So we use our multimeter and continuity mode. If we have continuity, it beeps. And then we put our probe on the lower side of the fuse and on the top side of the fuse. And as you can hear, or not hear in this case, there's no continuity to, through this fuse. And to check again, multimeter is on. So, what does that tell us? Our fuse blew on our 12 volts down here. That means we need to disassemble the card. One more thing I can show you. If we go to resistance mode, have black and red, we use black on a ground like the bracket and go through on one of the three fingers. You can see nothing, open line. That also confirms that our fuse is blown. I'm going to quickly disassemble the card and get you by right back when I did that. As you can see now, our small little board is disassembled. I got the cooler right here. The thermal paste is very dry, so this thing probably hasn't been opened in a long time, but there was no warranty sticker. What we're going to try now is we're going to see with our props and with resistance modes, root mode, why our fuse fuse blow blue? So we're going to take one prop on ground and the other one at the other side of the fuse. And as you can see on my multimeter, we have basically zero ohms. The resistance of my props is very high, so three ohms is is probably about one 1.5 ohms out of my props, and the rest is the VRM that somewhere is sending our 12 volts that would be coming right in here, either directly to the GPU or somewhere to ground. We can check that. We take one probe to the side of the fuse and one probe after one of the inductors. And as you can see, one of those MOSFETs failed open. So if there's 12 volts, on this MOSFET we would send it right through to our GPU. That might have killed it. We don't know yet. Now we need to find out what what of these components is dead. One of these MOSFETs is, uh, is going to be. For that we will need our power supply again. I need to get that hooked up. And we're also going to be needing our thermal camera. One moment please. Right now I got everything set up. I soldered two wires, one red one after the fuse, 
one black one after an inductor. They have continuity right now to each other, I checked that. Then we have a clamp, one negative from our power supply, right in the bottom right corner. And I got a phone with my thermal camera set up to it. Right now what we're going to do is we have another clamp. We have this crocodile clamp. This crocodile clamp is going to be connected to that red wire right there. You're going to see the current jump on our power supply. As you can see, 5 amps. We're going to use our thermal camera. Point with something pointy on our MOSFET. As you can see, it's getting burning hot. And now turn off the power supply because that's a lot of current for one volt. So we now know it was this MOSFET right here, which is that one. Yeah, so that was quite easy. Uh, we are going to proceed to unsolder this. I'm probably going to fast forward it again and show you how I did that. I'm probably just going to use hot air, nothing special, not even with preheat, not any uh, adding any solder or anything. I'm going to undo these wires, going to be unsoldering this one and then we're going to see what comes next. And right now we have another voiceover. As you can see now, we are removing the MOSFET. It took quite a while, I got to be honest. And I made a big mistake on soldering this MOSFET, as you can see now. I knocked off quite a few components. One capacitor at the top, one capacitor at the bottom, and also a, a resistor. Yeah, I shake too much when the MOSFET unsoldered. I had too much tension on it. Now I'm trying to resolve the situation. The bottom capacitor soldered in right at the place. And now we're going to the top capacitor. Give it a little nudge. And as you can see, it flew away. I actually found the resistor that I knocked off. Was able to resolder that one. And we took off the wires. That's our ground cable. And then our positive cable that was on the fuse. Now we proceed to unsolder the fuse using some leaded solder, some hot air, taking the fuse right off. Now we clean up those pads. Now I show you this is a 10 amp 12 or 6 SMD fuse. These are what I'm using from AliExpress. Now we soldering the fuse back in. And that's all from the soldering. As you now can see, we have quite a mess on our table. We have a test motherboard. We have a PCIe riser. Got a DVI cable hooked up. And the right, right there, you have my screen. That is po uh, our post screen from this mainboard with this DVI cable. We got our GPU with no MOSFET anymore and a new fuse down there. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn the power supply on. And I actually forgot something very quickly. Forgot to put at least anything on there. Be right back. And we're back. Same setup as before. Just with the tiny little heatsink on our GPU core. Still no MOSFET there. Now we're going to turn this power supply on. We're going to press the button. Now we're going to wait. Nothing blew up yet. We can see the post LEDs cycling on our main board. We're still waiting. Can't feel any warmth yet. And we have picture. As you can see in the bottom right, this card is alive again. And we are in BIOS, that's very nice to know. And without the, the one phase, I'm going to turn it off quickly. Next thing I'm going to do is put new thermal paste on this and put the cooler back on. 
be right back. Our card is back in action. It is now fully assembled. Put some new thermal paste on. Luckily no thermal pads to replace. Nothing, no GPU to kill because of two thick pads. And now what we're going to do is we're now going to boot the th this thing into Windows and we're going to I'm going to show you that it works. Now we turned our power supply on into the socket. And now going to push our button and our system comes to life. We're going to pay attention to our post screen. And we have picture. Our board is booting right up into Windows. That's great. We have a single stick of RAM. We have a CPU in here. This is a 2600X. We got our RF RX 464 gig now. And we're going into our test setup here. Don't worry that it said crypto as a um, username. That's just a random test SSD that I have l left over. As you can see, our resolution is way too big because there are no drivers. There are way too many things on the desktop. I'm going to quickly find an Ethernet cable. We're going to plug our Ethernet into here. We're going to see if I can make the resolution better. Yep, there's 1080p. And resolution is still not perfect. That's probably because drivers are still loading. I'm going to get you back onto this as soon as we have a stress test uh, running on this. And as you can see already, we are, we're getting black screens because the driver is loading. And we should get picture back. Yeah. Okay, driver load, never mind. It all worked way faster than I thought. So now we're going to use GPU Z. Let's make this screen a little bit bigger for you so you can see this better. And hopefully as you can see we have an RX 460. We have where's the RAM GDR5 4 gigs. And now I'm going to use MSI Afterburner. to use our fan speed, set it to 70 and now we're going to hit it with some Furmark. We are back with Furmark. We're going to run something a little bit smaller right here. Let's 1600 per 900 do two times and let's stress this GPU. Oh wow. That was only my capture card right there spazzing out. That didn't happen on my monitor. But as you can see, our fluffy donut is spinning in all of its glory in 1600 by 900. Our board is taking its power that it should. Our GPU, we have 100% load. The fan isn't reporting correctly in here, but is correct in MSI Afterburner. Interesting. Our GPU temperature looks good because it hasn't risen to 100 degrees yet. Clocks look fine. And as you can see, the GPU works even with one face missing. I wouldn't recommend to do it this way. I even have the replacements, like the replacement MOSFETs for this. But this GPU is mostly just going to be on my, my post GPU. I'm just going to use it for posting because it's easy because it doesn't need any auxiliary power and it has DVI and it has HDMI and DisplayPort. So I sadly cannot tell you when this works, when you can leave out a, G um, a phase of the GPU and when not. I know on these RX 460s you can let them out and you don't need to replace them. It would be better to replace them because this board will probably be a lot cooler 
because the other phases have to work stronger for this and I don't know if you actually lose performance or would gain any if you would put the thing back on but as you can see a replacement of the fuse, a replacement uh, uh, taking off the MOSFET got the GPU back to life the work was probably around what 10-15 minutes and yeah we got a GPU working again this is going to be in my stash I'm going to let Formark run a little bit longer just to be sure. The the fans are still quite quite odd that the fan speed is 132% right now, but it all works fine as you can see. This is a very low power graphics card, so don't expect any high FPS or anything but uh but from it. But I hope you learned something. It was exciting for you, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.